So bone marrow uh, transplantation is a process uh, where we essentially take um, what we call bone marrow or blood stem cells uh, and use those stem cells either to transplant into uh, a, a patient, into a recipient, mm -hmm. or sometimes the bone marrow stem cells are taken out, stored and then re-transplanted into the same uh, individual, the same patient. The commonest um, indication for a bone marrow transplant is a patient with leukemia. Um, and then uh, probably the second most uh, common indication that we see here is uh, for patients with another blood cancer called uh, myeloma. Uh, and then after that, there are sort of rarer conditions uh, such as aplastic anemia, uh, myelodysplastic syndrome, uh, certain types of lymphomas uh, who will benefit from bone marrow transplant. And then there's also a range of non-cancerous uh, blood conditions uh, who also benefit from uh, bone marrow transplantation. Two main reasons why we do uh, transplants in blood cancers. So one, the, the simple, uh, simpler reason is to enable us to give higher doses of chemotherapy, uh, which would either could either prolong the remission or in uh, certain diseases uh, cure the condition. The second reason is uh, a bit more complicated. It's also to enable us to give more chemotherapy, but it's also to give the recipient a new um, blood system, so a new uh, fresh, healthy bone marrow, and also to give the recipient a new immune system, which in some cases can help uh, reduce the risk of uh, the condition relapsing. We can sort of divide the types of uh, bone marrow transplant into uh, two types. Mm -hmm. uh, one is what we call, first or the simpler process is what we call an auto autologous uh, transplant. And what autologous transplant involves is collecting uh, blood stem cells from the patient. And then after a course of high dose chemotherapy, using the patient's own cells and returning them those cells back to the patient. The second is uh, more complex uh, and it's called um, broadly an allogeneic transplant. And an allogeneic transplant uses bone marrow stem cells from a donor. So these donors may be uh, either related in the form of uh, siblings, unrelated, so volunteer donors, um, they could also be, uh, on occasion, um, what, no, we don't use uh, cadaveric uh, donors for bone marrow. On occasion, it could be uh, umbilical cord blood units uh, from cord blood banks. And uh, it could also be, um, in certain situations, uh, relations or first degree relations who are not completely or fully compatible uh, with the uh, recipient. So the process uh, starts probably well before the actual uh, transplant, uh, where we either uh, assess the fitness of the uh, a donor, mm -hmm. or we assess the fitness of the recipient or the patient to undergo the process of bone marrow transplantation. If the um, transplant is going to be uh, an allergenic transplant, i.e. from a different, a different person, uh, then we have to find a donor and make sure that donor is uh, able to fit and well and medically able to donate. Um, once all the details and all the logistics have been uh, sort of firmed up, the uh, patient uh, the recipient needs to um, undergo a stage of what we call conditioning therapy, mm 
Conditioning therapy may just comprise chemotherapy, or it may be chemotherapy plus some radiotherapy. And then after a break of one or two or maybe three days, uh, we infuse uh, the stem cells from the donor or from uh, the recipient, depending on what type of transplant uh, we're doing. Um, stem cells go into the recipient very much like a blood transfusion. So there's no surgery or no operation as such involved for the uh, recipient. Um, after that, uh, the patient undergoes a period of recovery, um, which usually lasts for approximately three to four weeks. Um, so we need to wait for the um, donated marrow uh, to grow, to produce safe numbers of white cells and platelets and red cells uh, before the patient is uh, well enough to go home. Um, we often tell patients that uh, the actual transplant, so this first part of it, the conditioning and the infusion of the uh, bone marrow and the recovery of the bone marrow as the first step uh, of a very long process yeah. because it can... The conditioning. Conditioning, thing. yes. The infusion of the cells uh, and the recovery after that. Um, that's the first step of a very long process of recovery because although the initial hospitalization for the transplant procedure may be uh, in a, between four to eight weeks, uh, often it takes uh, a recipient maybe six months or a year or even longer to sort of fully recover uh, from the but effects the of the transplant. Phase, yeah. the, re the recovery phase can be quite long.